it's Nina and thanks for joining me for a new tutorial. Today we're going to be creating this beautiful floral arrangement and I'm going to show you how easy it is to create some no line coloring effects. This video is also part of Kathy Rakusen's 30 day coloring challenge blog hop. She is celebrating 10 coloring challenges and I'm so excited to be sharing some fun inspiration featuring lots of coloring. So I want to start off by creating a wash of color for the background of my coloring. This is going to serve as just a little bit of color in the background, but it's also going to serve as an underpainting, which means that this will alter some of the colors that I'll be placing over top. Watercolors are translucent, so they're going to reflect the colors that are underneath and creating a really beautiful look. I'm using a few light shades of green, pink, and also quite a bit of yellow. Yellow is going to be predominant in this watercolor background because I want the colors to appear very warm when I'm adding the colors on top for the florals. Once my background is completely colored, I'm going to set this aside so it can dry. While that's drying, I'll work on creating the masks that I'm going to need to do my stamping. I'll be using the More Spring Flowers and the new Even More Spring Flowers stamp sets, and I'm stamping these each onto some post-it tape. Post-it tape is great for creating masks, and so I'm stamping each of these flowers in the colors that are going to be coordinating with the colors that I'm going to use for the actual watercoloring. I'm also using those same inks to stamp the flowers onto my now dry background. I'm using colored inks because the inks that I'm using are going to easily allow me to see the lines of the stamped image and make no line coloring even easier. When you choose colors that are exactly the same or very close to the colors that you're going to be using for the actual coloring of the image, the lines are not going to be visible once you're finished with the coloring. They're going to be very faint, but they're also going to give your image a little bit of definition. I particularly like doing this with Simon inks because these inks have a tendency to soak up the color that you're adding over top of them. So you end up getting a really nice darker version of the stamping and underneath of that watercoloring so that you have some little bit of detail and definition to your flower, but you're also not having those black outlines that are going to distract from the image and maybe aren't quite the look you're looking for. So this is going to allow you to get that no line coloring effect really, really easily. As you can see, I've stamped a whole arrangement of florals and I use those masks to create my scene. Now I'm bringing in watercolors. I'm using Prima watercolors to color in these flowers and leaves. As I'm coloring, I'm starting off with just one layer of color onto each image. Once we've gotten all of these images colored and they're dry, I'll go back in with another layer and add detail. Now remember how I said that the underpainting that we have underneath is going to alter the colors? Here's a look at those two colors that I used for the blue and the green side by side. And you can see that they have a much warmer tone in the background panel that I'm coloring versus what's on a piece of scratch paper. And that's because they're translucent. They're picking up the colors that are underneath of the paints that I'm putting down to color in my florals. So because we have a lot of predominantly warm colors in the background, that's going to help these images have a warm golden tone. I'm going to let you watch me finish adding in these base coats of colors and then I'll come back when we're ready to start the next part of the process. Okay, so all of my base coat is done and added onto each of these flowers and now it's time to start adding additional details and shading. In the centers of some of the flowers I did add some stippling and then on all of the flowers and leaves I brought in a second layer of color. Now you don't have to do this, you can leave the coloring as is, but this really is going to help make your flowers and leaves and foliage really come to life. You can also see that I'm dropping in additional colors at times on these leaves. 
I wanted them to have the appearance as if they had some light on them. So I brought in a lighter teal green and added that onto the tips and then brought in another darker shade to add in a bit more shading. For these flowers that I'm coloring here with the blue, I wanted these to have a more rich tone because I felt that they were hiding in the background a little bit. But because we had used a light color to start off with as the base coat, this allows me to bring in a darker color and create that really great shading. Now, if you have old paint brushes, never throw those away because these are really helpful in helping you create really an awesome texture. I have this paintbrush which has a little bit of a splayed edge to it. And I'm using that to create some stippling and fun texture in the background to serve as some foliage that's not quite in focus, but yet it fills in the background. I'm also making sure to utilize some of my more fine tip paintbrushes, and those help get into really tiny nooks and crannies and allow you to get really detailed shading. Here I'm using those fine tip paintbrushes to add stippling to the flowers, and I'm also using that same stippling technique in the background to help give that texture a bit more contrast. You can see that by layering some darker colors over top of the stippling we did with the smaller brush, now we're getting some additional detail and contrast, and it's helping fill things in even more. Now we can stop here and leave this more as a watercolor painting, or you can get more realistic and add additional details with colored pencils. There are so many different ways to color, and what's really fun about coloring is that you can do whatever you want. And I love being able to experiment and see what kinds of things I like. And I've always liked the look of colored pencils over top of watercoloring just to add a little bit more extra detail where the paintbrush is a little bit harder to get into. Here I'm using a few colored pencils to add some shading to each of my flowers. I'm also using those same colored pencils in some varieties of greens to help give a little bit of vein texture to the foliage and the leaves. When you're working with colored pencils, make sure you have a really fine, sharp point. I like using the Kum Eraser, K-U-M. It's a German-made eraser and really, really great for sharpening colored pencils. I have never had a lot of trouble with this sharpener, and it always gives me a lot of really nice, fine detail points, which is a great bonus because it's often easy to break a colored pencil. When I'm also shading with these pencils, I wanna make sure that I use a fairly light hand. I don't wanna to push too hard because it's going to make your lines thicker. If you want a thicker line, you could definitely push harder, but the more you push, the less detail you're going to achieve. This was a labor of love, but so worth it. And you can see that once you break down the steps and see how easy it is to color with the no line style using these inks, because you can see the lines as you're coloring, it helps really make the no line coloring process much more simpler. To finish off this card, I did use our Simon exclusive Big Thanks Word Die, along with a sentiment from a My Favorite Things gratitude stamp set. I hope that this card has inspired you to do some coloring of your own. I hope you participate in Kathy's 30 day coloring challenge. You can find all the details on Kathy's blog and I have links to that over on the blog which I have linked down below in the video description. Thanks so much for stopping by. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more inspiration. I'll see you again very soon. Bye.